Texts. Kudhaka Nikaya. Volume. Chapter. Theragatha. Verses of the Elder Monks. Thera. Colon. Godhika, Subahu, Valia, Atiya. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Godhika, Subahu, Valia, Atiya. In the time of our Buddha. These four, companions in a former birth when Kasapa Buddha was on earth, were reborn at Pava as the sons of four Mala Rajas, and there was whole-hearted friendship between them. They went on some embassy to the king at Kapilavathu. At that time the Lord too had gone there, and was staying in the Banyan Park, where he convinced the Sakyan Rajas by his twin miracle then the four saw the same and believed. They entered the monk's order, and not long after attained arahantship with thorough mastery of the letter and spirit of the path. Now after they had received much honor and support from the king and his ministers, they lived in the forest. Then King Bimbasara, when they went to Rajagaha, called on them and invited them to spend the rains, building for each of them a hut, but carelessly omitting to have the huts roofed. So the Theras lived in those huts unsheltered. But at the time of the rains, the god reigned not. And the king, wondering because of that, remembered his neglect, and had the it thatched with plaster and painted, and held an opening festival, besides giving gifts to the monk's order. The Theras did the king the favor of entering, and forthwith attained to the suffusion of universal love. Then from the north and the east arose a great storm cloud, and just as the Theras emerged from their ecstasy, the rain fell. Then Godhika, aroused by the thunder of the storm, uttered this verse. God reigns as it was a melody most sweet. Snug is my little hut, sheltered, well roofed. The heart of me is firm and at peace. Now as it please you to reign, God, rain. And Sabahu. God reigns as it was a melody most sweet. Snug is my little hut, sheltered, well roofed. Well has my mind the body's nature grasped. Now as it please you to reign, God, reign. And Valia. God reigns as it was a melody most sweet. Snug is my little hut, sheltered, well roofed. In this earnest and strenuous I live. Now in it please you to reign, God, reign. And Atiya. God reigns as it was a melody most sweet. Snug is my little hut, sheltered, well roofed. In this I live unmated and alone. Now in it please you to reign, God, reign. Thera. Colon. Anjana Vanya. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Anjana Vanya. He was reborn in this Buddha age at Vasali, of the family of a Raja of the Vajans. When he was grown up, a threefold panic had arisen in the Vajian territory to wit, the fear of drought, of sickness, and of non-human foes. This is all told in the commentary on the Ratana Sutta. When the exalted one quieted the panic at Vasali, and a great concourse heard him preach, this Raja's son heard him also, and winning faith, left the world. When he had fulfilled the preliminary training, he lived in the Anjana wood at Saketa. And when the rains drew near, he procured a worn castaway couch, and placing it on four stones and enclosing it above and around with grasses, he set up a door to it, and so got a sheltered retreat for the rainy season. After only one month his strenuous study won for him arahantship. Thereafter, feeling the bliss of emancipation, he roused himself, and meditating his victory with rapture uttered this verse. Deep in the leafy glades of Anjana my couch into a little hut I made. The threefold wisdom have I made my own and all the Buddha's ordinance is done. 
Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Thera. Colon. Kativaharan. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Kativaharan. His story is like that of Anjana Vanya, with this difference. While striving for insight he was walking by the fields, and took shelter from the rain in the little empty hut of the field watchman, and their one arahantship. Upon that the watchman came and said, Who is in the hut? The answer was, A bhikkhu is in the hut, and the rest of the verse. Who's in my little hut? A bhikkhu it is. Who in your little hut, all passions tamed, has truly set his mind? Know this, O oh friend. It was not for nothing you made your little hut. Then the watchman said, Luck indeed for me, good luck indeed is mine, that your honor should have come into my little hut and be sitting there. Single quote. And the exalted one heard their converse by his celestial hearing, and discerned the watchman's pleasure. And he addressed these verses to him. Within the hut, a monk lives, peace in his heart cleaned of all stain. Fruit of this deed shall be to you. Lord of the gods you will come to be. Six times, yes, seven, Lord of the gods, ruler over celestial realms. Thereafter all your passions tamed, a silent Buddha you shall be. From that time the Thera began to be called Kativaharan. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Thera. Colon. Kativaharan. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Kativaharan. His story resembles that of the Anjana wood Thera, with this difference. When he had left the world under similar circumstances, he pursued his religious studies in a very old hut. And he thought. This old hut is now rotten. I ought to make another. So he turned his mind to new action. Then a spirit, seeking salvation, sought to agitate him by uttering this verse, simple in words but profound in meaning. This was an ancient hut, you say. To build another hut, a new one, is your wish. Oh throw away the longing for a hut. New hut will bring new pain, monk, to you. When he heard these words, the Thera grew anxious, and with effort and endeavor establishing insight, soon won arahantship. Upon that he repeated the verse as that which had spurred him on to victory, and as the declaration of his Anna. Because he had attained while in the hut, he, too, became known as Kativaharan. Thera. Colon. Ramaniakutika. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Ramaniakutika. His story resembles that of the Anjana woodlander, with this difference. He lived in a hut beside a small village in the Vargian territory. It was a pretty pleasing little hut, with floor and walls well prepared, surrounded by park and tank, and with its enclosure of smooth pearly sand. And the Thera's excellent virtues enhanced its attractiveness. He there won Arahantship, and there continued to live. Now when people came to see the settlement, they could also see the hut. One day a few fast women came by near, and seeing the attractiveness of the hut said, The monk living there might be a youth we could fascinate. So they approached him saying, Delightful, sir, is your living place. We too are delightful to see, just in the prime of our youth, and they began to show off the dress and so forth. But the Thera set forth his passionless state in this verse. Delightful is my little hut, the gift, most fair of faithful, pious folk. What need of women then have I? No, go, there to them, you women, who have need of you. By this, not needing, saying, 
the declaration of the Thera's Arahantship is implied. Thera. Colon. Kosalavaharan. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Kosalavaharan. His story resembles that of the Anjana woodlander, with this difference. After his novice initiate, he lived in the forest by a village in the kingdom of Kosala, near the living of a lay follower. The latter, seeing him camped under a tree, made a little hut and gave it him. There the Thera attained Arahantship. Then filled with rapture at his emancipation, he uttered this saying. Strong in my faith, I left the world. Now here, within the woods a hut is made for me. And I with zeal and ardor meditate. With watchful wit and clarity of mind. This was his declaration of Anna. And because he lived so long in Kosala, he became known as the Kosala Settler. Thera. Colon. Savali. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Savali. Bhante Shivali Shakyaputra. He was reborn in this Buddha age as the son of Supavasa, the king's daughter. When his mother was not able to bring forth and lay seven days in great suffering, she said to her husband, Before I die I will give a gift. And she sent him to the Lord, saying, Go tell of my state to the Lord, and invite him. And what he says, Mark well and come and tell it me. He did her reminding, and the Lord said, May Supavasa, daughter of the Kaliyas, be happy. May she, happy and healthy, give birth to a healthy child. The Raja heard, saluted the exalted one and set out for the village. Even before he came, Supavasa was delivered of a son. The persons who had surrounded her with tearful faces went forth delighted to tell the Raja. He saw them coming and thought, That which he of the ten powers told me has been fulfilled. And he went to the princess and told her what the Lord had pronounced. Then she asked him to show hospitality to the Buddha and the monk's order for seven days. And saying, The child is born, bringing gladness of heart to all our kin, they named him Savali. By the seventh day from his birth, he was able to do anything. Saraputta, general of the path, conversed with him on that day, and said, Does it not require of one who has overcome such suffering as you have done to leave the world? Sir, babbled the infant, I would leave the world. Supavasa saw them talking, and asked the Thera what he had said. We spoke of the long suffering he has overcome. With your leave I will initiate him into monkhood. She replied, It is well, sir. Initiate him. And Saraputta, initiating him, said, Savali, you want no other teaching than the cause of the long suffering you have overcome. Think on that. Sir, replied the child, yours was the burden of initiating me but I will find out what I am capable of doing. At the moment when the first lock of his hair was cut off, he was established in the fruition of the first path, when the second was cut, in that of the second path, and so for the third and fourth. Comma. Other teachers say that after Saraputta had initiated him into monkhood, he went the same day, and taking up his abode in a secluded hut, meditated on his woefully delayed birth, and so, his knowledge attaining maturity, descended into the avenue of insight, throwing out all the intoxicants and thus attaining arahantship. Upon that experiencing the bliss of emancipation, he in emotional rapture uttered this saying, Now have they prospered, all my highest aims, to compass which I sought this still retreat the holy wisdom and liberty, my quest. All lurking vain conceits I throw away. Thera. Colon. Vapa. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids.
Dot. Vapa. He was reborn in this Buddha age at Kapilavathu, as the son of a Brahmin Vasita. Now when Asita the seer had declared that the young noble Siddhata would become omniscient, Vapa with four other sons of Brahmins, Kondana at their head, became monks. When Asita's prophecy had been fulfilled, Vapa heard the Buddha preach and thought, I will win salvation. He was present during the six years when the great being made his ascetic struggles. Upon that disgusted when the latter again took solid food, he went to Isipatana, and there met the Lord then starting the wheel of the path rolling and achieved Sotapana. On the fifth day he and his four mates won Arahantship. Upon that reflecting on the might of the Lord and the blindness of the world, and how the Aryan state bestowed vision, he said this verse. He who did see can see another seer. Him too who has no eyes by which to see. He who himself sees not, can never discern. Either the eye that sees not, or the seer. Thera. Colon. Vaji Putta. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Vaji Putta. He was born in this Buddha age at Vasali, in the family of a counselor, and was named Vaji Sun. He saw the majesty of the Exalted One when the latter came to Vasali, believed, entered the monk's order, and after his novice initiate lived in a wood near Vasali. Now a festival took place at Vasali, and there was dancing, singing and reciting, all the people happily enjoying the festival. And the sound of that distracted the bhikkhu, so that he quitted his solitude, gave up his exercise, and showed forth his disgust in this verse. Each by himself we in the forest live, like logs rejected by the woodman's craft. So move the days one like another by, who more unlucky in their lot than we. Now a woodland sprite heard him, and had compassion on the bhikkhu and thus upbraided him, even though you, bhikkhu, speak scornfully of forest life, the wise desiring solitude think much of it, and to show him the advantage of it spoke this verse. Each by himself we in the forest live, like logs rejected by the woodman's craft. And many a one did envy me my lot. Even as the hell bound, him, he also moves to heaven. Then the bhikkhu, stirred like a thoroughbred horse by the spur, went down into the avenue of insight, and striving soon won arahantship. Upon that he thought, the fairy's verse has been my goad. And he recited it himself. Thera. Colon. Paca. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Paca. Born in this Buddha age among the Sakyans, in the township of Devadaha, in the family of a Sakyan Raja, he was named young Samoda. But inasmuch as, when a boy, he suffered from rheumatism, and at times walked like a cripple, he grew to be called Paka, and retained the name after his recovery. He was present when the Exalted One visited his family, won faith in him, entered the monk's order, and lived in the forest. Going one day to the village for arms, he sat down beneath a tree. Then a kite, seizing some flesh, flew up into the sky. Him many kites attacked, making him drop the meat. Another kite grabbed the fallen flesh, and was plundered by another. And the bhikkhu thought, just like that meet are worldly desires, common to all, full of pain and woe and reflecting on this, and how they were impermanent and so on, he carried out his mission, sat down for his afternoon rest, and expanding insight won arahantship. Upon that making the base of his emotion his goad, he declared Anna in this verse. They fly at what is fallen, and as it lies. Swooping in greed they come again, again. Comma. But what it was meet to do, that have I done. And what is verily delectable. 
in that was my delight. Thus happily has happiness been sought after and won. Thera. Colon. Vimala Kondana. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Reese Davids. Dot. Vimala Kondana. He was reborn in this Buddha age as the son of Ambapali, his father being King Bimbasara. She named the child Vimala, but afterwards he was known as Vimala Kondana. He was convinced by the Buddha majesty of the Exalted One at Vasali, left the world for the order, and attained arahantship. He declared his Anna in this verse. By the bright banner came I here to birth. In her called of the tree. And by the Ketu. That cuts down the Ketu, is the great Ketu overthrown. Thera. Colon. Akhepakata Vaka. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Reese Davids. Dot. Akhepakata Vaka. He was born in this Buddha age at Savathi, as the son of a Brahmin of the Vaka family. He heard the Lord preach, entered the monk's order, and went to live at a village settlement in Kosala. Through the bhikkhus who came there from time to time he mastered the doctrine, although he did not know how to distinguish what was Vinaya, what Suttanta, and what Abadhamma. This too, however, he learned from questioning Sariputta. So that, whereas other bhikkhus were versed in Vinaya, or in some other part of doctrine, he had learnt the Pitakas by heart, even before the council, when they were recited. And soon after attaining this proficiency, he won Arahantship. Thereafter he became a teacher, and one day, addressing himself as another person, he uttered this verse. That heaped wealth by Vaka's toil thrown up by steady increment these many years. That did he to the lay people declare seated in honor, filled with splendid joy. Thera. Colon. Meghia. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Reese Davids. Dot. Meghia. Reborn in this Buddha age at Kapilavathu, in the family of a Sakyan Raja, he was named Meghia. When grown up, he entered the monk's order and ministered to the Exalted One, while he was residing at Kalika on the river Kimakala. And seeing a pleasant mango wood he desired to live there. Twice the Exalted One refused, but at his third request, let him go. There, however, being consumed by evil thoughts as by flies, he got no concentration of mind, so he returned and told the Lord. The latter said, when the heart, Meghia, is not ripe for emancipation, five things conduce to that, and addressed him. Ed upon which Meghia attained Arahantship, and announced his Anna in this verse. He, the great courageous Lord, disciplined me, who has all transcended all dharmas. And I, hearing the path, held close to him, in loving pupilage and piety. The threefold wisdom have I made my own. And all the Buddha's ordinance is done. Thera. Colon. Ekadharma Savanir. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Reese Davids. Dot. Ekadharma Savanir. He was reborn in this Buddha age at Setavaya, in the family of a counselor. When the exalted one visited Setavaya, and stayed in the Singsapa wood, he went to listen to him, saluting, and sitting down at one side. The Lord contemplated his inclinations, and taught him the path in the verse. Impermanent indeed are all worldly things. And he, influenced by his past resolve when the path was revived, discerned the truth more plainly, left the world, and studying the notions of sorrow and of the absence of self, acquired insight and won arahantship. And because, by one hearing of the path alone, his destiny was fulfilled, he acquired the name of once Dharma Hira. His Anna he declared in this verse, Burnt up in me is all that did defile. 
and rooted out all life's continuance. Killed utterly the cycle of rebirth. Now is there no more coming back to be. Thera. Colon. Ecudenia. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Ecudenia. He was reborn in this Buddha age at Savathi, as the son of a wealthy counselor. Come to years of discretion, he was convinced by the majesty of the Buddha, at the presentation of the Jetta Grove, and left the world. Fulfilling his novice initiate, and living in the forest, he came to the Lord to learn. And at that time the Lord, seeing Saraputta wrapped in meditation near him, broke forth into this saying. He who did dwell on highest plane of thought, etc. And the monk hearing him, even when once more far away, and for a long time in the forest, kept repeating the saying ever and presently, so that it became customary to call him, Ekudaniya, one saying a uh. single quote. Now one day he got unity and concentration of mind, and so, insight expanding, he won arahantship and living in the bliss of emancipation, he was once invited by the treasurer of the path to be tested in exposition, with the words, Friend, explain the doctrine to me. And from long living in mind over that verse, he uttered it then again. He who did dwell on highest plane of thought, with zeal unfaltering, sage, arahant, in wisdom's branches trained, such as he is, no sorrows may disturb him, who with mind, calm and serene and clear remains yes. This became the declaration of his Anna. Thera. Colon. Chan. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Channa. Reborn when our exalted one was alive in the house of King Sudhadana. This man was a slave called Channa. A contemporary of the future Buddha, he found faith in the Lord when the latter returned to meet his family. He upon that entered the monk's order. Out of his affection for him, egoistic pride in, our Buddha, our doctrine, arose, and he could not conquer this fondness, nor perform his duty as novice. When the Lord had passed away, and his injunction that the higher penalty be imposed on Channa was carried out, the latter suffered anguish, eradicated his fondness, and soon after attained arahantship. Thereafter, blissful in his emancipation, he expressed his rapture in this saying, I heard the truth which the Great One had taught, and felt its mighty virtues, known by him, who all things with supernal insight knew the path for winning things ambrosial. I found, past Lord he in truth to guide, into the way of blissful security. Thera. Colon. Punna. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Punna. Reborn in this Buddha age in the Sunaparanta country, at the port of Saparaka, in the family of a aristocrat, he was named Punna. Arrived at years of discretion, he went with a great caravan of merchandise to Savathi, when the exalted one happened to be there. And he went to hear the Lord at the Vihara with the local lay followers. There he believed, and left the world. And for a time he won favor among the teachers and preceptors by his skill in dialectic. Then one day he went to the Lord, and asked for a lesson, so that he, hearing propositions pairwise, might after that go to live in Sunaparanta. To him the exalted one uttered a lion's roar, of a lesson, to wit. Now there are objects, punna, cognizable by the eye, etc. So punna departed, and studying concentration and insight, acquired the three forms of higher cognition. When he won arahantship he won over many people to the faith, even lay monks and as many lay sisters. And as he lay near final death, he declared Anna in this verse. 
Only virtue here is highest. But the wise man is supreme. He who wisdom has and virtue. He among men and gods is victor. Thera. Colon. Vakapala. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Vakapala he was born in this Buddha age at Rajagaha, as the son of a rich Brahmin, and was named Vakapala. He saw when the Lord met Bimbasara, the self-submission.